Hello and welcome to SAR Histories, where today you join me at Warwick Castle. Warwick Castle is a medieval castle developed from a wooden modern bailey fort, originally built by William the Conqueror in 1068, as the Normans moved north in their conquest of England. The castle has been the seat of powerful families such as the de Beaumonts, but most prominent in history is Richard Neville, the 16th Earl of Warwick, or as history knows him, the Kingmaker. I, Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, call you to arms. Men of England, I call you to arms. In our country is the illegitimate traitor Edward with foreign powers. The kingdom is threatened. Your households are threatened. Saddle your horses. Temper your weapons. Prepare for a great and decisive battle. God on the right. God for the king. God for King Henry. So we've just been around the walkthrough attraction called the Kingmaker, which is based around the castle preparing for war. In real history, the Earl of Warwick, Richard Neville, switched sides from York to Lancaster, dethroning Edward IV and placing Henry VI back on the throne, hence how he got his name, the Kingmaker. It's a great attraction and probably my favourite at the castle though not much has changed in all the years I've been coming and it's perhaps time for a little change. Like a more updated retelling with lighting, well better lighting and smell pods to emerge you more in, into the scenery. But if you've never done it, you definitely should.
So what you just saw was the Great Hall, which is the biggest room in the castle. It is approximately 12 metres high, 19 long and 14 wide. The hall houses a collection of arms and armour and is a must see when visiting the castle. We now move into the state dining room where some of England's finest craftsmanship can be seen. It was Francis Greville who commissioned the room in 1763 and since then it has seen some illustrious guests like Queen Victoria and her husband Prince Albert in 1858, Prince Edward later Edward VII and much more recently Elizabeth II and Prince Philip who took lunch in the room in 1996. Moving further into the house now, we will see the cedar drawing room, the green drawing room, the Queen Anne bedroom, the blue boudoir, the armory passageway and the chapel. The cedar drawing room was named after its intricate 17th century panelling and was used for housing grand festivities and ballroom dancing. The green drawing room is aptly named after its green panelling and functioned mainly as a private gentleman's room to rest and play in the comforts of its tranquil space. The Queen Anne bedroom was formerly known as the State Bedroom and was renamed in 1773 after Queen Anne's furniture was given to Francis Greville, the first Earl of Warwick, by King George III. The Blue Boudoir is a small intimate room which was redecorated by Daisy Greville, 5th Countess of Warwick, in 1890 to convert the private dressing room into a ladies boudoir so that she could host ladies during a party while the men withdrew to the green drawing room. Warwick Castle's chapel was commissioned by Sir Fluke Greville in the early 1600s, although a chapel was founded on this site as long ago as 1119. The chapel was the meeting place of the Earls of Warwick and their families every Sunday until the mid 20th century. We are now walking through the Royal Weekend Party, which is based on a party in 1898 when the Countess Daisy Greville hosted a number of important and influential figures in Britain at the time. Most prominent of all was Edward the Prince of Wales, Lord Curzon and Winston Churchill. The majority of the furniture and fittings in these rooms are original and the rooms are laid out as they were in 1898 which makes this attraction both fascinating and captivating. These weekend parties would usually involve dancing, dining, hunting and gossiping and it is said that Daisy thrived in her role as a hostess.
So we have now come out of the Royal Weekend and are making our way up the battlements towards Guy's Tower which was built in the 1300s. The tower would, would have originally been used to accommodate important guests of the Earls of Warwick. However, these rooms were sometimes used to house prisoners including William Sutherland, William Stanley and an Edward Daisy, all leaving their identity behind through graffiti on the walls. As well as walk through attractions here at Warwick, they have a bird of prey display. Falconry was a popular sport among European nobles during the medieval period, with different species of birds being deemed appropriate for different social ranks, the eagle being for those at the top. On this magnificent bird are transfixed by its presence, power. With a blazing yellow beak and talons. The Stellar's Eagle, one of the largest and one of the toughest eagles. With its distinctive eyes and pointed tufts of feather upon its head, Hobby was in awe. This nocturnal bird of prey will hide in the trees, almost invisible, until the time is right to strike. Trebuchet at Warwick was built in 2005 and is based on 13th and 14th century drawings. It stands some 18 metres tall and is made from over 300 pieces of oak, weighing an impressive 22 tonnes. Unfortunately, the trebuchet looks in a sorry state, weather worn and cracked. It is no longer in use as it stands beside the jousting arena and I can only hope that this great piece of medieval engineering returns to working order. We're now in the mill and engine house where there has been a mill at the present site since the late 14th century. Originally Corn was grinded here and in the 17th century an engine house was built for pumping water into the castle. In 1880 a fire gutted the mill and shortly after the mill was rebuilt into an electricity generating plant that we see today. As we look upon the oldest part of the castle, it is time to give my final thoughts. Warwick is still a great castle to visit and offers a full day of family fun. 
but over the years I felt it slowly moving towards younger children and offers little to nothing for older children. Its latest Zog theme may appeal to those with small children, but for me it diminishes the historical significance of Warwick and would much prefer to see a more realistic castle and less of a theme park. If you don't want to miss out on future vlogs, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.